Hi, so in this video I want to talk briefly about the PyYAML library. Now, often configurations are stored in YAML files and YAML is actually a superset of JSON and I'll show you that a little bit later in this video. It's kind of an interesting fact and one that will actually become useful in a subsequent video that I'll make on actually querying YAML data. Now reading those configs in our Python app is dead easy with the PyYAML library. Now, of course, you're not limited to config files, right? YAML is found in different places. And you can also just as easily read and write Docker Compose files, for example, which can be written in YAML and any other YAML file, really. Now, I have a notebook, fully annotated Jupyter notebook that's available. It's linked below. It's in the regular repo. And I give you a link to the PyYAML library. But basically, you install it with a pip install PyYAML. Now for this notebook, you're gonna find two companion files, YAML files, and let me show you them here. And you're gonna find this one. You're gonna find this Docker Compose YAML. This one, let me go ahead and delete it because we're going to actually create it in here. And you're gonna find also this Nobel Prizes JSON. I'll show you that briefly. We're not gonna work with it much, but I will show you how to deal with JSON using PyYAML. And as I said, this will come in useful later. And you also have a config YAML, okay? So these are the files that we're gonna look at. So let's start by importing YAML. Now, although the YAML library provides a load function and you can use that to load YAML, and basically you're gonna load it just like you would load JSON using the JSON, right, load or load S, well, you have the same thing with YAML, but with YAML, you've got to be a little bit careful because YAML can actually end up running Python code. It can actually end up running stuff on your machine. So it is not safe to just load any YAML file, right? Unless you have full control of that YAML file, you've written that YAML file, you know exactly what's in it, or maybe a team member of yours has written it, then maybe you can use the plain load function but the safest thing to do is to use safe load. That's the preferred method. So you do have a load method, but safe load is better. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna copy paste the code so I don't waste time typing. So we're going to open this config YAML file, right? Let's take a look at what it was, right? So I have observer, latitude, longitude, horizon file. I've got a catalog that's got a DSO catalog and then a categories, which is a list, emission nebula, reflection nebula, and so on. So we're going to basically go ahead and load this YAML file up, like so. And now we can take a look at config. And config is basically a dictionary. You can see observer is a dictionary, right? That's exactly what we had here. Observer, essentially a dictionary, latitude, longitude, horizon file. We've got that here, the catalog. You can see the categories is indeed a list and so on. So from this point on, we can use whatever we want. We, you know, we could manipulate this data or read this data using dictionary keys. We could even use Pydantic. That's very often what I end up doing when I have control on the YAML file. I know what's in it. I know the schema. I basically would set up something like this. So from Pydantic, I'll import base model. My settings, which is my overall settings file, is has two keys, observer and catalog, right? Observer and catalog. And then observer is itself a dictionary, is an object with latitude, longitude, horizon file. Catalog has file categories, which is a list of strings. So I can basically set it up this way. Observer is observer settings with these three fields. And I'll let the horizon file, I can't really can't pronounce that name today. I'll let the horizon file be nullable. Uh, and defaulted to none. And then for the categories, I have the file in the categories, which is a list of strings, right? And I, I'm not making those optional. Okay, so when we do this, then it's very easy. We can go ahead and do a model validate. I'm using Py Pydantic V2, by the way. Um, I had to think about whether it was V2 or V3. We're on Pydantic V2, so it's model validate. And you can see it loaded up this data into my Pydantic model. Okay, so this is how you load YAML using PyYAML. Easy, right? Just open the file, load it. But use safe load. Only use load if you're absolutely sure that you're not gonna get into trouble doing that. Now, I did mention that 
JSON is essentially a subset of YAML, or YAML is a superset of JSON. So valid JSON happens to be valid YAML as well. If we look at this Nobel Prize's JSON, then this is an actual JSON file. Let me go ahead and open this with something else. I'll open it with the editor. And you can see that this is just JSON, right? This doesn't look like YAML. It looks like JSON. But JSON is YAML. All right, let me go prove that to you. So I'm going to do this using the normal JSON load, right? So I can do JSON load from the regular um, standard libraries JSON module and if we want to look at JSON I'm not going to look at everything because it's a long list so I'll look at the prizes because that is indeed what we have we have the root and then we have prizes we've got a single key called prizes which is a list of elements 670 elements in this case so I'm just going to take the first three from there right and so we get this data that was loaded using the JSON load now let's go ahead and do the same thing but in this case, I'm going to use the PyYAML library to load it. So I'm going to do YAML safe load. And if we take a look at the same thing over here, but now it's not data JSON I'm looking at, it's data YAML, you'll see we get the same data. In fact, we can compare data JSON with data YAML and those compare true. They're exactly the same thing. JSON is a subset of YAML. Okay, so that's an interesting aside. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should stop using JSON load and use PyYAML to load your JSON data. If you have JSON data, it is much faster to use the JSON parser from the library, from the standard library, than to use PyYAML. You know, YAML is a superset of JSON. So to parse YAML, it has to do a lot more work. And if that YAML happens to be restricted to just the JSON subset, that's that's fine, that's okay, but it still has to go through its parsing steps and so on. So it has naturally a lot more work to do to parse the same data. So PyAML is going to be slower than using JSON, right? So if you've got JSON, stick to JSON. I just wanted to point out that JSON is a subset of YAML. All right, so of course with this data, we can go ahead, and I'll just show you that quick. We can load that up using Pydantic. And again, if you don't know Pydantic, I have a video on Pydantic in this channel, and I also have a full course on Pydantic on Udemy as well. Everything's linked below. So here I have the prizes, which as we saw was the key in the root dictionary, in the root object, and it's just a list of prize objects. The prize has year, category, overall motivation, the laureates, and the laureates is a list of laureate objects that have an ID, first name, surname, motivation, share. This isn't good practice over here. I should have used an alias and so on, but this is just quick and dirty. And so now, I, instead of doing what I did over here to get the first three items, right, because everything's loaded into now pedantic models, then this becomes dot prizes, like so, right? And it's data pedantic, sorry, like so, okay? So we get the same thing, except now everything's loaded up. And we, of course, know that everything's been validated. That's the nice thing about using Pydantic. Okay, so that's for reading YAML data or JSON data using the PyYAML library. Now, what about the reverse? What about writing data? So for this, we're going to take a look at the YAML file that I have here called Docker Compose. This is a Docker Compose file that I use to basically start, you know, spin up a local Redis server that I can use. It's Dockerized and I can use it with my Python apps for various things. I actually used it in one of the videos that I have in this channel on distributed computing using Redis. I just grabbed the Docker Compose file from that particular blog post. So let's go ahead and read that file in. So again, I'm just going to copy the code. So we're reading the file, and then we're just going to look at the contents of Redis. And you can see we get this dictionary over here. We have the version, we have services, container name. That's kind of what we had over here, right? So let's put those side by side, and let me close this. Okay, so that's great. 
So now let's say that I need to modify maybe the port mappings. Maybe I don't want 6379 to map to 6379. Maybe I want something else to map to 6379. And then maybe I want to change the container name. Right now it's called Redis Q, but maybe I need to change it to something else because it's conflicting with something or whatever it is. But I want to do this programmatically. So I'm not going into the Docker Compose file to make changes. Let's say that I need to make changes to this file programmatically. Well, I've loaded the data, so now I have that essentially in a Python dictionary. So I can go ahead and modify this dictionary however I want, right? So I can grab Redis services, Redis, the container name, and set it to some value. I can take the ports. I could append to this, or I could just replace what's there currently, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to replace it with a new mapping, just a single mapping, like so. So if we look at Redis, now, of course, this dictionary has been updated. And now I want to write it out back to this file. Now I'm not going to write it out back to this original file because I want to be able to kind of play around with it and I don't want to overwrite my original file. Let's say I've made a mistake, right? So at least for now, and you know, I'm going to write it to a new file. And eventually once all the bugs are ironed out and I've got it exactly how I want, then maybe I would just overwrite the original Docker Compose file. So to do this, we're going to use the dump function that is provided by PyAML. So we're going to open the file that we're going to save to. So I'm going to call it docker-compose.new.yaml and open it, of course, for write. And then I use the dump function in the YAML module. I tell it which object I want to dump and I tell it or which dictionary specifically I want to dump. And I tell it also which file I want to dump to. So when we do this, we now should have a new file show up here. And come on, should show up. There we go, finally showed up. And it was written, by the way, right away. It's just Jupyter that's taking a while to do that. So let me go ahead and open it. And let me put it um, over here. So we can kind of see them side by side. You'll notice that there's some differences, right? First of all, I have these three uh, dashes over here. That's because I have what's called an explicit document, and that's no longer in the output file that I created here. You can see also that it reordered all my keys. And by default, YAML is going to essentially do uh, an ordering. It's going to sort the keys when it writes them out. So this is why you get command, container name, image ports, restart, and volumes, like so, right? And then we have volumes version down here. So version move from up here to down there and so on. And of course, that's really not what I want. I, I want to maintain the order of the keys in which I read them in, and I want to maintain the fact that this is an explicit document. Okay. So fortunately, uh, PyYAML gives us some options that we can use. So the first one is we want to tell it, don't sort the keys. Well, that's very simple. We're going to go here and we're going to give it some argument here. It's going to be a named argument sort keys equals false, like so. So now, if we take a look at this one, this still looks the same, but let me go ahead and refresh. I don't know if I can refresh from here. So reload YAML file from disk. There we go. Okay, so it was under the file menu. And you can see now, at least, I have things back in the same order. I've got version, services, the spacing really doesn't matter. That I don't think I can control. Um, there, there might be a way to control that. I just haven't bothered looking. Uh, certainly take a look at the dump and see if there's a way that you can control the number of new lines between, let's say, your keys. I don't know if that's possible. But anyways, you can see at least now I've retained the original order, insertion order essentially, the original order of the keys in my Docker Compose file. The only thing that's still missing is this over here, which may not be important to you. And I do want to show you that it is possible to specify it. Let me close this down. And basically, it's just another argument that we can specify here. It's called explicit start. So I want to make this an explicit start in, in this document. I say true. I'm going to highlight Docker Compose, go back to file, reload YAML from disk. And you can see that I now have this back as well. So at this point, 
I'd be comfortable with just replacing and saying docker compose dot yaml like so, right? And just replacing my original file that I've just modified because I know that I haven't messed up, you know, the, the layout and the, the ordering of the keys and so on in this particular YAML file. But that's it. I mean, there are more things that PyYAML can do, but this is probably, you know, what I use 90% of the time, right? I read my YAML and actually 80% of the time I just read YAML. It's going to be configuration files that I, that I have to read when my application starts up that have been written to, you know, the particular Kubernetes um, system that it's running in. And it's uh, got these config files. It's got secret files, maybe, or things like that. It's going to all you always use PyYAML to read those YAML files. And then sometimes I also need to be able to emit YAML. In that case, I would use the YAML dump. And then if I've got cases like this where I need to be able to modify an existing YAML file without messing everything up in it, then I would definitely use things like sort keys equals false. And if I have to, if I have an explicit document and I want to retain that, then I would also use this explicit start equals true. And as I said, you have some other options as well that you can specify. For example, you can see that the quotes here originally have disappeared. There is a, again, a setting that you can use, an extra argument that you can use to basically say, no, you need to put in quotes. All right, so that's how to use PyAML. In a future video, I will cover a library that can be used to actually query data. And it's called YAQL, Yak, Yak, YAQL, I guess maybe that's how it's pronounced. Um, but I will cover that in a future video. And that's it. Thanks for watching.